Hello, my name is Beck, and welcome to another tier ranking video. This time, instead of just Brendan Sanderson, I'm going to be tier ranking a whole bunch of fantasy that I've read across adult and young adult. So let's get into the list. I've read all of these, and that's why I thought I may as well rank them all against each other and see how they fare. So unlike last time, I have a different ranking system. So this time it's amazing, enjoyed, not bad, meh, and nope. <laughs> so first up, with the Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. Not really for me, so that's going straight into nope. I think I gave that two stars when I read it. And I gave it a two stars because I found the main character had no sense of agency until the very end, which was a really cool action sequence, and then that's it, so gonna stay down there in nope and we'll move on. So A Darker Shade of Magic was pretty good. That was enjoyed. I liked the unique aspect of the E. Schwab's world and that there are parallel Londons. There's red, black and white I think and we follow Kel who can transition into each world and he uses blood magic to do that so it's a pretty cool series. B. E. Schwab up there on my favorites list. She's not like a favorite author but she's an author that I will consistently buy from. So next is Game of Thrones. Oh this is a really hard one because I I've read up to like halfway in the first book and while I did like it, uh, I didn't like the constant threat of sexual violence and rape and everything to define character arcs and other characters in the world seem to really condone rape and I just don't like it. So I think I'm going to put that in nope as well, even though I did give the first two books like four out of five stars each just for the story, the world and the action and character. Oh, maybe I should put it in meh. I'll put it in meh. It wasn't entirely a nope, but me, Dean, I think the series was a nope so there you go. A Little Hatred is going to go straight into Amazing because I thought this was a worthy five star book. I've read all of Joe Abercrombie's books up to this point so if you're going to read Joe Abercrombie I probably wouldn't start with A Little Hatred just because he's built up all of his world in his previous installments in the series and so you're going to see recurring characters and not really understand their significance so don't start with A Little Hatred start with The Blade Itself and I think that's on my list as well um yeah The Blade Itself so that'll go in enjoy Enjoyed just because it was a bit of a slower moving book. The beginning it was really action-packed and I was like yes let's do this but it kind of petered off a little bit and became more about character and politics rather than action and that's not a bad thing considering how well Joe Abercrombie builds up all his character so that's gonna go in enjoyed a little hatred will go in amazing. Next Assassin's Apprentice and this is a really hard one for me to rate because I haven't read this in like 10 plus years so I might just put it in enjoyed rather than amazing even though Robin Hobb is a favorite author of mine because I really want to reread this series and see what my new ratings would be now now that I've read a lot more fantasy and I kind of know what to look for and I know what I like so I I don't think it would dip below four stars, um, but I know that my favorite character in the series only comes into the second book, so I might be romanticizing my reaction to the first one. <laughs> Next is Blood Song, and that might just go in not bad because it had a few similarities to books like Name of the Wind, for example. It had a orphaned character, effectively, or kind of orphaned, who got sent to a magical school and was trained to become a soldier or assassin kind of character. There was an underlying magic system that wasn't really acknowledged too much, but it was definitely there. And while I liked Valen in the first book I found that he got muddied in the installments in the series because they were multiple perspective and the voice that Anthony Ryan writes in is too similar across his multiple perspective characters so I kind of got disinterested in the rest of the books but I did like Blood Song. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. Moving on to Captive Prince and that will go in meh for me. If you haven't heard of Captive Prince before it is a very uh, it's a very explicit book. I wanted to like it and apparently book two and three get better in terms of character building and politics and world building and stuff but oh the first book just threw me off a little bit. I gave it a three out of five stars. It wasn't like it was a bad book but I just don't think it was to my palette. <laughs> Next is Children of Blood and Bone and this is also gonna go in meh. It's kind of testing me because I want to put it in nope but I did give it a three out of five stars so I can't quite put it in nope. Oh maybe I can. I might actually because the love interest in this was just shoehorned in it felt like at least to me and it really cheapened the story to me. What was a fantastic mythological book became really two-dimensional with the love interest because it wasn't even hate to love it was just like hate flip a coin oh yeah I guess I'm interested in that character now and it just didn't feel very authentic so that's why that's down there in nope even though the world building was pretty cool and the cliffhanger was awesome. <laughs> City of Brass would probably just go in not bad because again I think I just missed the mark on that book because I adored the beginning. I thought it was incredible. It's set in Cairo and it's about jinn and demons and stuff and it was awesome but then it went off into like the jinn realm and jinn politics and 
it swept this character that we follow up in all of that and I didn't care. And so it built me up in the first part and then it kind of left me hanging for the rest of the series. But I know that this has been a favorite book of a lot of people. So I'm probably just, I'm just not getting the same things ticked as the rest of the people who read this book. So I'm probably an outlier again, but it is YA fantasy. So I tend to lean into more adult fantasy. So take that as you will. Darien was a really interesting one and I don't see a lot of people talk about it. And it was multiple perspective, it was dark, but but it didn't have the grunt, I think, that I'm after. It had a really cool scene at the start with some awesome magic, but after that, it petered off. It had a really cool way of all the characters kind of combining, but not really knowing who each other are. But the reader does, so that's why it's awesome. It was just a bit short and it didn't have the voice that I wanted, I think. I think that's where I'm struggling to connect with it. I gave it a three. It wasn't bad, but wasn't amazing. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I was gonna put it in enjoyed, but I think it might just go in not bad because I did rate it four stars when I read it. But Lainey Taylor has this habit of making her characters fall in love immediately or just being soulmates and it's I don't think that's a trope that I enjoy because it makes me go oh that's not very believable whereas in Strange the Dreamer I was like I loved it because she did it in a different way in Strange the Dreamer and I feel like I could excuse it a little bit and in Daughter of Smoke and Bone I was like oh <laughs> Daughter of Smoke and Bone is about a girl named Kaoru and she works for a guy named Brimstone and Brimstone is a I think he's a chimera and she has to collect teeth for him to work his soul magic. Strange the Dreamer is about a guy named Laszlo Strange and he works works in a library and one day he feels the city of Weep just wink out of existence and so he is trying to research into the city and see what is going on and why he felt it disappear. And one day a group of touring people come to the town that he's in and come to his library and are recruiting for people to go on this journey to find this mythical city. So Laszlo ends up joining in that journey and that's what it is. So I actually received this as my first review copy from a publisher ever. So it also has a special place in my heart for that reason. But I did like the book. I liked Strange the Dreamer more than Daughter of Smoke and Bone, although we won't talk about Muse of Nightmares because I think that just went in a direction again that I didn't enjoy. So Strange the Dreamer is where it's gonna stay. Frostblood! That is a Avatar The Last Airbender inspired elemental magic book, which is pretty cool. If you like Katara and Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender, you will like Frost blood because it's kind of modeled after them if they got together in the show. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It follows a character named Ruby. Firebloods are outlawed and Frostbloods have taken over. It's one of my more favored YA series, but the last book kind of left me hanging in terms of plot and it went more in character and love interest direction, which, you know, I want to say YA does that a lot, but it has the potential not to, so that's why I was disappointed. <laughs> Welcome to me tier ranking fantasy and finding out all the ways I was disappointed. That's basically what this video is at this point, isn't it? Okay, speaking of, Joe Abercrombie, meh. This is his YA series, Half a King, and I thought it was a bit lackluster in the way it executed plot. It seemed to just have one thread all the way through it. And I know I am definitely used to reading stories with multiple threads happening at the same time. And Yavi, the main character, I can't believe I remember his name. <laughs> he just said the same things and reiterated them all the time. And it got a little bit tiresome for me. The YA series by Joe Abercrombie didn't really do it for me, but his adult series definitely did. Sorry, Joe Abercrombie, but your YA series didn't hit for me. <laughs> Philip Pullman, Northern Lights, not bad. I enjoyed the first book more than the following ones. His Dark Materials was a series that I found missing at the end because it didn't end the way I wanted it to, and it left me wanting, and the fact that it's got a new spin-off series with the main character being 20 years older, that's probably why I was left a bit hanging, but if you didn't didn't know that series was going to be written and you finished a trilogy and then your audience was like what what's this wouldn't wouldn't you be disappointed as a reader anyway I enjoyed the first book it had a quest narrative it was more middle gradey and it's a book series that I didn't get when I was young so I came to it older and later in my life so I think I could have loved it and had the same nostalgia I would feel towards like Narnia and Harry Potter but that just didn't happen Kings of the Wild a really fun adult fantasy really fun it's kind of modeled off a love letter to D&D &D, and it has a quest narrative in it with a bunch of adult characters who used 
used to be in their prime amazing warriors but they've since settled and had families and got married and all that kind of thing and now one of the band of mercenaries his daughter has been kidnapped so he's kind of trying to get the band and the group back together to go on this quest to help her and rescue her so it was a really fun adult fantasy and it's actually it can be read as a standalone which is excellent so if you're looking to get into fantasy kings of the wild was a lot of fun and then lies of Loch Lamora, that's just gonna be a meh are these all in the right order oh, i think i loved northern lights more than daughter of smoke and bone yep okay that's in order um that can go at the end and then yeah yeah lies of Loch Lamora, that's what i was talking about it was good i gave it three but the premise of like the gentleman bastards being all thieves sounded amazing and then the execution of it was just a little bit lackluster for me. I'm not entirely sure of the multitude of reasons why because I'm sure there's more than one reason but the way that it read it had timelines that went from the past and then you were reading about the present time as well and because of that time jump and something happening in the past I was like I know what is going to happen at the end of this book so it wasn't a surprise and that's what disappointed me I think because it was a little bit more transparent than I thought and I didn't really care about the politics and the characterization and stuff. Nevermore was so lovely! Ah. Oh. If you're looking for a book that's nostalgic in the same way that Harry Potter's nostalgic and the same way that Harry Potter is magical, you're gonna love this because I know that every new magical middle grade is advertised as having some kind of tie to Harry Potter, but Nevermore is the one that's legitimate because it kind of invoked this nostalgia that I didn't realize that I had. And it was just so much fun and it was beautiful. So it's about a girl who is named Morrigan Crow and she thinks she's cursed and she gets effectively saved taken away through this portal into Nevermore by this guy named Jupiter and he's a wizard and it's just wonderful and it's so much fun so if you can it's got the magical portal to another world trope it's got a magical school trope it's got found family it's just wonderful so of course it would be something that I enjoy <laughs> next is Nevernight and I'm gonna put that up in amazing yeah I'll put it in amazing I was hesitating there because I liked God's Grave more than Nevernight and Dark Dawn but I gave them all five stars so I should put Nevernight up here oh and I'm sorry Neil Gaiman fans but I'm putting Norse mythology in meh because I don't know what it is. I just can't connect to Neil Gaiman's writing. I think it's a character flaw of mine. Norse mythology, all the stories of the Norse gods, that's basically what it is. Read by, I think it's read by Neil Gaiman. I didn't dislike his reading of it. I just found the work a little bit dry. So sorry. Poison Study I read recently actually, I want to say this year but I think it was last year. I read it for a readathon and I know this is a nostalgic series for some but I obviously didn't get on the bandwagon then and I really enjoyed reading it. I gave it a 4, I think it could have easily been a 3 or a 4 stars because Obviously I've read so much fantasy since fantasy started and this is like starter pack fantasy that I could see all of the tropes and I knew what was coming and that doesn't mean it's a bad book it just means that it's really stylized and I kind of missed the boat on that stylized format. Prince of Thorns? Mmm. I might put it in not bad which is hard but I'll do it. I think I enjoyed Bloodsong more because Bloodsong was more built than the Prince of Thorns. So Prince of Thorns I did a spoiler vlog for it too if you want to get all of my insider thoughts but it just seemed to have again like half a king one solid plot line going through it and Jorg was really finding himself it was a very dark fantasy it was very unique and it had an element of like a flair of sci-fi in it as well closer to the end I liked it because it was unique and I remembered it because it was unique but I'm not enthralled by it I'm just interested so hopefully the rest of the series which I have not read yet makes me more interested Priory of the Orange Tree that will go and enjoy but did I enjoy it more than Frostblood or Strange the Dreamer uh, I think I like Kings of the Wild more and Nevermore more. Nevermore more. <laughs> Priori is here. I think it sits very comfortably there because I think I did a vlog for it ages ago but I just found the size of it and I know the size of it is like the size of other fantasy books like the Throne of Glass series or whatever and so many other people have read that so they can conceivably read Priory of the Orange Tree. That's not my problem. I read long books all the time but I think it was long in the sense that it was also unwieldy because you knew that because it was a standalone everything would wrap up within that book and I found the tension to be a little bit lacking because of that even though I liked what Samantha did with the world building and the dragons and I liked a couple of her characters but not all of them so I think she did a stunning job and I'm really anticipating more novellas and stuff in that world but as far as this story went I don't think I was as obsessed as I wanted to be but it was still a fun read I still really enjoyed it. Queen of the Tealing I read a long time ago and I've since seen reviews say that the main character I can't remember her name now but the main character was quite negative towards any other female in the book and I really don't like it when women tear each other down in series because it's a chance to not go down that stereotypical trope angle. So because the main character tore women down 
that were either lesser than herself or kind of equal to her station. A bit disappointing, but I don't know, again, I don't think I noticed it while I was reading. I kind of just took it on as part of the main character's characterization. So it has a, like a two-toned aspect to it. So I'm just going to put it in not bad because I like the dystopian fantasy element and I like the magic that was starting to emerge, but I didn't really care for much else. And that's why I didn't continue the series. Red Queen I'm putting up in Amazing, which is probably a surprise, <laughs> but I was obsessed with this book and and it's like Rebellion and X-Men set in a fantastical world and it's about the Red Bloods who are the working class rebelling against the Silver Bloods which are the royal class and the Silver Bloods usually have an X-Men like power but our main character Mare may have manifested a power of her own even though she's only a Red Blood so yeah it's a lot of fun and it was just a really digestible fantasy and I read it at the right time when my brain was a little bit knackered from writing an honours thesis so I picked this up and it was just like catnip for my cat brain at the time. Wonderful, wonderful. The rest of the series, not so much, but Red Queen holds a special place in my heart. Now another book with red in it, Red Sister. Enjoyed because I listened to the audiobook for this and I think I missed stuff, so I need to reread it like I reread Prince of Thorns to see what I thought. Actually, I think this should go here in Not Bad because I enjoyed it, but I don't remember a lot about the world and the magic system. And I've seen people say that the magic system in Red Sister was excellent and I'm like, what magic system? So I think I need to reread it to actually solidify more of my thoughts there. It's like assassin nuns, basically. <laughs> say Real is just gonna go in meh because while I liked the premise of it with necromancy and wizardry and the closer you get to technology and the further away you get from the magical realm, the less your magic happens. I liked that, but uh, I just didn't care about the storytelling aspect. I think I disconnected with the voice of the story because it was in third person, but I still felt removed and I felt a bit disconnected. So it was cool, but it wasn't for me. Same with Shadow and Bone, also a meh. I think it's just because it's a standard like starter pack YA fantasy and I'm not meaning to like crap on YA fantasy because I genuinely enjoy it and I think it's wonderful, but it just doesn't hit the same as an adult fantasy for me personally. So Shadow and Bone falls down here, but Six of Crows is going to go up in Amazing because I was obsessed with this when I read it. I remember sitting on the train going to work and listening to the audiobooks for these and I just remember having to hold in my tears and stuff when I was reading the second book. I think this series or this duology rather was wonderful. So I'm really happy that I love Six of Crows because I read Shadow and Bone first because everyone was like, you need to read the Grisha trilogy first. And then I didn't read the trilogy first because I gave the first book three stars and I went straight on to Six of Crows. So some stuff I thought, oh, I wish I had a bit of context for, but most of the story was absolutely fine. So I don't think it was a bad thing that I missed out on the trilogy. <laughs> Next is Shadow of the Fox. And this was really enjoyable. Do I want to put it up in front of Strange the Dreamer? Yeah, before Nevermore. This book was like an anime in a YA novel. Oh, how do I even describe this? It's been so long since I read it. I know that it was following a kitsune, which is a girl who is a fox demon. And she is working under her mentor at this temple, I think. And one day the temple Temple gets absolutely eviscerated by demons and her master gifts her on his dying breath the last part of this scroll and says you need to go to this other master show him this scroll because he has the other piece and you need to keep it safe and trust no one else with it except yourself so it's about her she runs into this samurai and then there's also another demon guy and they all end up forming a motley crew that goes on this quest together I regret that I haven't started the second book yet because it did end on a cliffhanger that made me want to keep reading Spellslinger is going straight up to Amazing and that is going to go after A Little Hatred because this is just a wonderful YA series. It follows an underdog, it has a found family in it, it has a wonderful established magic system and it has such wonderful character growth. This is definitely one of my all-time favourite fantasy series. So if you want to read a fantasy, read Spellslinger because it was Similarly, Trader's Blade, like Spellslinger, up there and amazing because both of them deserve it. Actually, do they deserve the top two spots? I think they do. Yes. Oh, we're going to Spinning Silver. All right. Um, that is going to be in Nope. Mm. I can't even think about the reasons why I didn't love it, but I have a spoiler-free review. I think I wrote that a while ago on my blog. So I will leave it linked below if you want to find out because I don't even remember. I know that it was just lackluster in terms of a lot of things and I skim read a lot of it after reading like 200 pages and nothing thing in the plot had really taken off. So mm, oops. Okay, moving on. Aloe of Law going straight up into five stars because it's Brendan Sanderson and we all know how I feel about Brendan Sanderson. And then Final Empire going to the top of Enjoyed because if you saw my tier ranking of Brendan Sanderson, you'll know that I loved Aloe of Law more than I loved the Final Empire. So there's the tea on that. And is there another one? Yes. The Way of Kings is also going to go up into Amazing as well. 
So that is Brandon Sanderson done. Brent Weeks I'm also going to have to put into Amazing and that was more amazing than Nevernight, Red Queen and Six of Crows I think because this is a wonderful series as well. Multiple perspective, adult fantasy but because it's multiple perspective it follows some adults and then it also follows Kip who is like 16 and there's a magic system based around colour and transmuting light into tangible formats and the magic system if you use it it depletes your life force. It's just so so detailed and I love that Brent Weeks talks about people's moral differences and their upbringings and backgrounds and so for example one character has grown up with slaves working for him in the castle that he lives in and as an outsider Kip's like oh my god slaves I don't like these are people how do I react to them properly with respect do like do I tip them what do I do and so it's interesting in that way because it allows you to examine characters and their environments and situations and social interactions from different perspectives and I really like that about the series I gave the first and the last book in the series five stars and then a smattering of four to four and a half stars as I read through the series if that makes sense moving into the bone witch enjoyed I'm gonna stick that in enjoyed this is like a mixture of name of the wind and memoirs of a geisha and I say that because it has like a geisha aspect to it with the way Rin gets accepted and trained but it's also kind of like a magical school ish if you consider that she's going to be trained somewhere and have peers around her that are also training so that's why it was a mixture of both there is also a necromancy magic system in here with heart stones and stuff which is pretty awesome so I need to read the rest of that series I need to get moving the fifth season is going to go right up into amazing and I think that would go oh I think it's going to go in front of Abercrombie which is something big because N.K. Jemison is uh quickly becoming one of my new favorites and the fifth season was a favorite of all time in 2019 and it's apocalyptic fantasy and that is all I want to say because you kind of have to go into this series discovering it because even though there is a plot to it the plot is a little bit convoluted and it's very much character driven so if you want to enjoy it just expect a wild ride the last wish the Witcher book, the Witcher book, where does she go? Where does she come from? Where does she go? I'll put it in not bad because it was not bad. I don't think I like the short story structure and that's why I am hesitating because I like Geralt. I like the premise of him being a Witcher so he's not quite human and has to drink potions to enhance his abilities. I like that there are monstrous creatures appearing that people want to run out of town but other people they're actual monsters. Like I like the messages in there but the execution fell a little bit short especially in the second book for me. Meh, last wish is just gonna sit there let's move on never the wind is going into amazing where shall you sit maybe I'll put it at the very very front because name of the wind was one of the very first adult fantasy books that I read and adored I think I read this for the first time in 2015 and was obsessed still am obsessed reread it a few years ago and still love it also sorry if the light keeps changing because the Sun keeps going in and out of clouds so I keep getting the flare from the window <laughs> Peter V Brett going straight to nope if you've seen me talk about this before you've seen me talk about it before it is an apocalyptic fantasy with demons I thought that premise was amazing but unfortunately it had a lot of questionable content in terms of developing the female characters they always seem to have either sexual assault or rape pushed upon them to develop them and I disagree with that so that's just a personal note on that book and that's why it's sitting all the way down here the shadow of what was lost is just going in meh because I found it a bit unwieldy when I read it because it was just so long and it seemed to drag a lot and this is a debut I think so considering the fact that it's a debut and it was also so long power to the author to be honest I never continued with the series so I didn't see what potentially improved about the series so my thoughts are probably outdated because I have a spoiler free review and I wrote it many years ago and I think it's just had a resurgence on booktube because the last few books have come out in the series so I've seen this cover pop up a fair bit The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan I'm gonna put in not bad do I want to put it in meh I think I'm putting it in meh after <laughs> Lies of Loch Lamora because this suffered from the same thing that the rest of the books in Blood Song suffered from and that was multiple perspective characters sounding the same I think I gave Anthony Ryan a pretty good shot but he wrote Blood Song which I really enjoyed and then after that I fell off the wagon of his unfortunately. The Winner's Curse is a YA fantasy. Where does it sit? Actually this had a trope in the last book I think that had to do with memory it was like temporary amnesia and as a plot device I find that very frustrating so I downrated the series because of that so it's just gonna sit in meh at the very end actually it had a cool character I think her name is Kestrel and the fact that I remember her name is pretty astounding because I read this many years ago but I know that Kestrel was renowned for her mind rather than being proficient in battle and that's why I liked her because she was very smart at maneuvering things politically but the love interest with her just seemed to assume things 
and there was a lot of miscommunication. And as you know, I hate miscommunication in a book because if a character has to hide something from you in order for your plot to work and it doesn't fit with their characterization, that seems a bit lazy to me. The Young Elites. Again, I love X-Men and this is a version of like X-Men in a dark dystopian fantasy world, but because the main character kept getting so repetitive, it got very frustrating. So I'm just gonna stick it in meh, actually. Same with Three Dark Crowns. Oh man, these last few are just gonna get like, Three Dark Crowns was also meh because it has a very odd writing style, at least to me. <laughs> I've seen a few other people talk about it, but the way that it's written seems very passive. And so even though it's supposed to be about three queens who all have to try and assassinate each other, so they become the one remaining queen and rule over their isle, it had a cool premise, but the way that it was executed was just pretty lackluster to me. I'm really hard to please, apparently. <laughs> Uprooted was actually enjoyed. I might just put it in after the Bone Witch. That's a pretty solid, solid spot for it to sit. I don't usually like fairy tale retellings, but I actually really enjoyed Uprooted. It had a fairy tale aspect and atmosphere to the book, so I don't know if it was actually a retelling or not, but it felt like a fairy tale. So I'm putting it in here in enjoyed. Oof. And then lastly, The Poppy War, which is a popular book, but one that I did not enjoy, which I've spoken about before. I'll link a vlog in the corner or something or in the description. But yeah, I felt let down. So I'm just going to put that in there. So, wow, we ranked them all. Well, there you go. These are all of my fantasy rankings. I, yeah, these are pretty much what I expected. I'm not really surprised with these, <laughs> but if you're surprised, please let me know what you would rank differently. I'd love to hear what you think, because obviously we all read and respond to different tropes and archetypes differently. And there are obviously things that we enjoy more than others. So this is ranked definitely upon my enjoyment most of all, but also takes into account the way a book is put together structurally, which is kind of how I try and format my reviews. So I'm pretty happy with this rating. I need to definitely continue some series, but that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will chat to you in the comments and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.